Oh, I call him just beautiful. And yet still only half as beautiful as you. Do you remember when we first met? But I have loved you since the moment we met. Teasing me mercilessly, in fact. And I think I know why. Even the years I pretended to be your friend, I was, but I loved you in secret. I have always loved you, Colin. I will spend a lifetime begging your forgiveness for not seeing you sooner. There is no need. There is nothing in the world that makes me happier than being with you. I will always look after you, Penelope. You are special to me. As are you. To me. You do not realise how much that meant to me. What you said to my mother. Your daughter did not entrap me. I proposed to her out of love, nothing less. No one has ever stood up for me like that. I will always stand up for you. Because I love you. I love you. I love you. I have been nice. Yes. Yeah. You are my mother. But I thought you believed the best foundation for great love was friendship. Indeed, I do. It is how your father and I began. But it is rare to begin as friends and for both parties to then feel more. And how did you and father know it was reciprocated? Because he gathered the courage to ask. You're coming with me. Your family will see me. For God's sake, Penelope Featherington, are you going to marry me or not? What about my dreams? Ladies do not have dreams. They have husbands. I don't mean to pick up my journal and read it. No, I, I did, but I should not have. No, I should not. Whatever you read was not meant for another's eye. You truly write so well. You make it seem effortless, which is so difficult to do. You. Yeah. My lady was crying. I did not try to deny it. I heard you with the printer. All of the lies you have told me. All of the things you have written about me and my family. Oh, God, look, please. I knew something was wrong. Perhaps that was another part of your planned entrapment. I'm trapped, you and I love you. I never forgive you. I hope you talk so much about my journal as if I were to be this great writer. When all this time, you have been a published writer, renowned across Mayfair. You do not sound as if you hate this town. You sound as if you are jealous of her. No, I'm not. I'm not asking for your help. I merely want to be honest. It is not up to you what we do. I am whistleblower. I will not change that. I cannot accept that. Then how am I meant to help you? By loving me. Ever since I found out you were whistled down, I have done everything I can to try to separate you from her. But the other day, I went back and read all of the letters you have sent me. Your letters have always been the ones I'm most eager to read. And I realized... You are her. You have always had one voice. There is no separating you from Whistledown. And after seeing you speak today... Well, I would not want to. Because forgive me, but that was bloody brilliant. I think, in truth, I... I have been envious of you. Of your success. Of your bravery. And now I simply cannot believe that a woman with such bravery loves me. 
how lucky I am to stand by your side and soak up even a little bit of your light. It's my only purpose in life is to love a woman as great as you. And I will be a very fulfilled man indeed. I love you.